individual can reach financial freedom in 10 years or less and make work completely optional, even if you're not starting from the best position. That's what I did. And the purpose of this video, which is going to be a nice short live, uh, where I don't actually probably have time to answer any questions. This is just something where I want to do a presentation where it is a stream of consciousness, what my reactions are to an article that I found. If you want to show up to a live stream where I answer all of the questions that come in, I do those every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Uh, I really like the live streams because sometimes people ask a question that prompts me to give information that I wouldn't know to make a video about. Kind of like today. I was in social media world, you know, stirring the pot, causing hate and discontent. Not as good as the real Jesse Lee does, but uh, my goal is to uh, show people that it's possible that there's another path. You don't have to work more than 40 hours a week for more than 40 years to retire on less than 40% of what you made. I found myself at 40 in a pretty bad position, right? Um, this is the Cliff Notes version. Single parent, three kids, laid off from law enforcement because of the 2008 housing crash, found out about $89,000 in bad debt in my name I didn't know existed until the divorce. And within eight years, uh, I started teaching people how to drive trucks, making $17 an hour. And within eight years, I reached bad debt free, financial independence to where work was optional. And then I worked for four more years because I really liked the job that I was doing. I was teaching people how to drive trucks, and I had a couple of ideas with the company that slowly got me demoted down to president of the company. But I finally retired last year uh, because time freedom was much more important to me than uh, any job, no matter how much you like it. I've heard people say, I love my job so much, I do it for free. That's not the kind of stupid I am. I'm a different kind of stupid. I loved my job so much, it was the last job I'll ever do for money. So I saw this article on social media when I was there stirring the pot. And all I've done is seen the title, right? It, it, the title says something like, and I'm going to pull it up here in a minute. It's uh, eight things that will cost uh, more when you retire and three things that will cost less. Um, I want to, whenever I open it up, I'm going to read whoever wrote the article because I want to give credit to them because this is their idea. This is their concept. And the reason I want to react to this is kind of the reason I like the live streams on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Pacific here on this channel, Dion Talk Financial Freedom, which is what you found if you accidentally clicked on this video. Sorry, I'm not better looking. Is this is somebody who is writing. So I don't know anything about their background. Maybe they're retired and they're writing in, in retirement. Maybe this is a writer who has talked to people who are retired. Or maybe this is somebody who just thought, here's what I think retirement will be like. Because I want to react to that as somebody who's officially been retired more than a year. I just hit the, what's it? it's, it's not anniversary. There's another thing for, for not working. <laughs> oh, having a great life for over a year. A life that I haven't had to escape which is what we do when we have a job. You get those two weeks where you beg for permission from some employer to be able to go do what you want to do. You can make that every single day. That sounded way more snarky than I thought it would. So let me pull this article up. Eight things that will cost you more when you retire and three things that will cost you less. I want to see, is it my experience or are these things that I haven't even thought of? And I'm not a tech guy. So let me make sure that I am doing this right. Uh, share screen. Okay. So this is a Reader's Digest, popped up in social media world. This is not something I would normally peruse. Uh, as a retired person, I listen to podcasts on finances, uh, audiobooks, fantasy stuff. That's a D&D map on the wall behind me. Uh, I don't often find myself here, but I saw it while I was scrolling on, I forget which social media it was at, but it caught my eye. So this must have been a paid article or something. Eight things that cost more when you retire and three things cost less by Michelle L. Black. Uh, this is from the beginning of 2023. Uh, in retirement, 80% of salary is supposed to be enough. That's a weird way of looking at it. So this is just stream of consciousness, a reaction to this article. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to do some bullet points. I will probably read the whole thing as I go. I'm not going to read it out loud. Um, you can find this on Reader's Digest. I'll probably put a link to this. I'll pin a link in the comments below after I finish this live stream. <clears throat> the 
percent of your salary is not what determines when you can retire or how much you need to retire. You, 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 uh, a lot of things, people think I need to replace my income. And if it's 80%, this is probably the thought process that said, these are things that will cost less in retirement and some things that will cost more. Um, it's not how much you make that tells you if you can retire, it's how much you spend. And a lot of people don't realize that uh, retirement isn't a, an amount it's an amount of cash flow per month. So we can look up our freedom number by looking at the data of the last six months. How much have I been spending? By looking at credit cards, receipts, bank statements, all your just regular receipts and seeing this is what it's been costing me to live my current life. That gives you an idea because your salary might be less than that. You're living on credit. You're probably not going to retire for a while. And it might be a fraction of what you're making. And then you can invest the difference and retire sooner. Health insurance could cost you more. So <laughs> that's the first one, of course. Uh, health insurance could cost you more. This is actually something that keeps people working for a long time because they think, well, how would I pay for health care? It's going to cost me more. Um, professional term. Bull dookie. It is not going to cost you more. It's going to cost you exactly the same. It's just now, instead of you working for an employer who takes part of your compensation package, that would be your money and putting it towards your health care, paying a part of the premium, you're going to cover that now yourself. It doesn't cost you any more. It's just you're not working for the money that the employer puts towards the health care. You need to cover it yourself, which in my case, the way that I talk about all expenses, travel, uh, housing, food, entertainment, someday dating, health care. It's an expense. And what you need is an asset for every expense. I have a duplex that is the vehicle duplex. Cash flow goes into a fund, and I think that's going to be my next vehicle. Then I have the uh, entertainment triplex, the travel duplex. The, the new duplex is to is a, is a house act to cover my expenses when I stay in Airbnbs in foreign countries. So I was going to, I was looking at purchasing in Portugal. I had a very negative experience with the people of Portugal, not the country itself. The Algarve was a beautiful area, but the people not so much. So I don't want to buy outside of the United States and be tied to a country. I bought a new house hack, Burr duplex, first Burr. And the, and the cash flow from this living mortgage free is going to fund my uh, travel to other countries. But that's the, the point of each asset covers the expense and healthcare is an expense. Right now, you're probably paying somewhere between zero and 10% of the premium if you have a job. The employer is covering 90 to 100% of the premium out of your compensation package that you are working for. Don't let healthcare be the thing that keeps you trapped in a job, especially if it's one you don't like. But even if it's one that you like, time freedom when you retire early is so much more important than working a job you like. There are things that you can do that you like that you don't have to be compensated. If you have to be compensated, that to me is not something I would wanna find purpose in. So health insurance can cost you more. I have a friend who is who just retired recently, bought some rentals. Uh, it's her birthday. Happy birthday. And uh, since she retired, she started COBRA for 18 months, and then she's going to do healthcare, did the research on how much healthcare is going to cost. Um, the, the coverage that she needs is um, about $800 a month, I think, in premiums. Is $800 a month, right? The cash flow from possibly a duplex worth working 40 hours a week or however many hours a week it takes to qualify for those benefits so that your employer can take money from your employment package and cover your health care. It will not cost you more in retirement. It, unless they're, let me see, is she tying this? It's a she, right? I'm going to assume gender based on name. I don't know too many guy and Michelle's. Uh, if retirement is tied to age, health care could cost you more because as you get older, more things start to fall apart. I enjoy, I enjoy it when you uh, are in your 20s and you sprain your ankle and you go to the doctor and they say, well, we're going to we're gonna wrap it. Here's your anti-inflammatories. Here's a workout routine that you can do to re-strengthen it. Here's a, the stretchy thing you can use on your door to add strength. But when you're in your 40s and you sprain your ankle, the doctor looks at you and goes, yep, it's going to be messed up now. So have an asset cover your expense for healthcare costing you more. I don't see that as, as, as true, because while you're working, the money you're generating for your employer that could be paid to you is being diverted to your health care. Care could cost you more. The average couple needs 280000 just for health care costs in retirement, according to Fidelity. Okay, so I don't follow Fidelity. I don't know. It's, Fidelity to me sounds like it's stock related. So you're getting information that says invest for 
uh, compound interest, which for me would add decades to the amount of work I needed to do to retire early. Um, many people underestimate the amount of money they'll spend in retirement on healthcare expenses. If you have this money set aside to cover the out-of-pocket costs, not covered by Medicare for supplemental insurance plan. So as you get older, healthcare can cost you more. Um, true. Working or not. So I don't think that's tied to retirement. I think that's tied to age. Uh, travel expenses can cost more during early retirement. Early retirement. Okay, so now we've tied it to you don't have to be so old to retire that you can't enjoy it. Uh, are you dreaming about retirement? You probably have extensive travel plans focused around spending time with loved ones and seeing more of the world. This is true. Uh, my last couple, so I went about eight years without taking a vacation. That was one of the things that contributed to me reaching financial independence and getting out, out completely out of bad debt. There's a difference between bad and good debt. I tried to create as much good debt as possible to get out of the bad debt. Debt's actually what got me out of debt. Uh, and then in the last couple of years before retiring, I started spending a month traveling. I took a month to Colombia, a month to Thailand. Uh, during the uh, pandemic, <laughs> I spent a month traveling around the United States with my brothers. Uh, and now my, my plan is to spend, I just spent a month, a month and a half in Portugal. I spent two months in Florida scuba diving last year and then learning a market for a friend uh, who now has a duplex, a single family and a single family building their portfolio, one rental at a time. But uh, my plans is uh, I'm 53, right? retired at 52, now I'm 53. I'm going to do a lot of traveling in the next five years. And then I'm probably going to, to be one of those weird people who buys an RV and does uh, United States travel for a year or two. And so I've got, you know, five to seven years of kind of travel plans that I don't think are going to cost me more. One of the things I really don't like about the FIRE movement, financial independence, retire early, is that people think you have to be frugal, right? If you had to be frugal, I don't know that I would have worked at retiring early. But that doesn't mean we need to be stupid with money, too. I spent a month in Colombia. I scuba dove, went to Cartagena, went to I don't know, six or seven different. I went. To, I didn't go to Medellin, and I didn't really spend much time in Bogota. Uh, although I thought I was being set up for a sting operation when I got off the plane in Bogota because of a question that was asked immediately after getting off the plane. I should tell that story someday when it's later in the day and I have uh, been drinking that water that makes my eyes water. Um, I came back with more money in my account than I left with. When I spent the month in Thailand, same thing. Uh, I came back with more money in my account than when I left with. The, the cost of living in certain countries is, where the dollar has a, a strong ratio in, in comparison to the local currency, um, the airfare at six or $700 one way, generally it was kind of the most expensive thing. Went to Portugal, it was about the same expense as the United States. So kind of I, I came back with more money than I left because my living expenses cost me less, but the travel there probably cost me more than if I had just stayed home. So this winter, I, first I have a cruise set up for the Mediterranean. Uh, I'm going back to see Matt the Lumberjack Landlord here. And then I'm probably going to spend about three months, depending on how this rehab goes on my first spur project, three months in Thailand. I will come back from Thailand with more money than when I left. Now, if you want to travel and you want to go spend uh, months in, in one of the more uh, affluent countries in Europe, yeah, your, your travel is going to cost you more. I don't want to be frugal, but I will plan accordingly so that I can travel and actually have more money in my accounts than when I left. Property taxes can cost more during retirement. Yeah, that really sucks <laughs> for tenants. Tenants pay property taxes. So let me see what the writer here is doing, though. When, when you own a property, your local government will charge you taxes every year based on the value of the property. So you uh, so if you have, have you read or listened to Rich Dad, Poor Dad, there's a, it was 19, I think, 97, he came out with the book, and it was very controversial. He talked about your house not being an asset. Because until then, the American dream was own your own home. It's the biggest investment you're ever going to make. Well, yeah, if you have a bunch of what we people call equity, what I call is the ability to place debt on an existing asset uh, in your house. It's not really doing you much and you can't eat it. So if you buy a big, huge house because you made enough money to invest in a real estate and you bought your own house as a primary, I think your real estate is a Schrodinger's asset or liability. We don't know if it is either one until we open the box and look at the numbers. Um, 
So if property taxes are going up on a house that you are paying for, that can make it rough in retirement, early retirement or retirement at an age uh, that most people would call normal. Um, so plan for that. I'm, let me see, eight properties in right now. Property taxes went up about 20%, I would say, in the last three years. Home and owner's insurance went up about 80% in the last three years which has added somewhere between one to $200 in expenses per property per month, while rents went up 20 to 28%. So yes, taxes can go up, but invest in an asset class that's growing with inflation. Entertainment expenses can cost more during retirement. Okay. One of the best parts about retirement is all the free time. So I thought they were gonna go with this. Free time that you get to do, fill things with you and enjoy doing. This, this, okay, I completely agree with this. Entertainment expenses can cost more when you retire. You, you one of the things I say in shorts and on my, my channel here is I can't teach you how to live longer. I have a very healthy lifestyle. I, I, I drink that water that makes my eyes water. I only work out three times a week and I'm more worried about core strength than um, looking good. Or I'm not trying to lose my big dad bod belly that I've got, but I'm trying to feel good. That's why I work out. So I'm, I'm not going to live longer. I teach people how to live more. The average person in the last year, I retired a little over a year ago. So I've been retired for a year. The average person who is still working, who still has to go to work is sleeping eight hours a day. I sleep at least that every day, right? If I'm not taking naps. So we lose the same eight hours to sleep. Then they're commuting one or two hours a day. I'm not commuting. Then they work for eight to 10 hours a day. I don't do that. And then um, in the evening they get, or whatever their schedule is, they get three to five hours. So let's say five hours, that's theirs. That's that's theirs to live their life. Not if you take out, you have to do laundry, you have to work out, you have to make food, you have to do whatever. So those five hours, let's say it was completely theirs to do whatever. Most people binge Netflix. I had 15 hours a day. 15 hours a day that were mine to live my life. So if you have five hours and you are wiped out from work, right? You work that eight to 10 hours. Uh, you did all the normal life stuff that we have to do that takes time. And then you get those five hours. That's why I think binging network Netflix is probably not a bad thing. You are literally just exhausted when you work. When you have 15 and you don't have a schedule because you can take a nap anytime you want to, you can wake up whenever you want to you can go to bed, whenever you want to. You would think in those 15 hours, you can go and spend a lot of money. But there's so much free things that you can do, right? How many state parks do you live next to? Uh, how many waterfronts do you live next to? How many areas can you go explore? Uh, what, what I don't want to say free shows are going on, but there are some fairly inexpensive things that you can do. Yes, if you go, okay, I'm going to take a cruise once a month for the next year, entertainment's going to cost you more. I, I'm doing probably one cruise a year. A new thing. I've only been on one. This is my second one coming up. So yeah, that's going to cost a little bit more. Um, entertainment is something that you want to be careful of. Here's the thought that you're going to have when you retire. If you've already retired, you can let me know. Uh, you will wonder how you had time to work. I heard that several times, never really registered with me until I've been retired for a year. And constantly I'm, I'm thinking, all of my days are full of all of the things that I want to do or can do. And I used to fit because I was, you know, the president of the company somewhere around 12 hours a day, six days a week into my schedule that just doesn't happen now. So if you find yourself overspending, uh, Herrick has some suggestions on how to cut down on expenses, make a plan before you retire and how you want to spend your time. Make, maybe take up an inexpensive hobby. Yes. So housing can cost more during retirement. Uh, that's the next one. Housing can cost more re during retirement. So I'm living for free, a house hack. A house hack to reach financial freedom and continue to house hack. If I move out of the unit that I'm in, the unit that I'm in would pay for the housing. So possibly. So let me see what they were going with here. Although it's very true, although it isn't true for every retiree, there's a chance your housing expenses could increase in your golden years. Adam says, if you move into an assisted living facility or need an arrangement, with easy access to medical care. Okay, so this is tying it to age again. If you get older, housing can get more expensive, so I have a plan for that. That's one of the reasons why I enjoy investing in real estate because I purchased most of them between 40 and 50 with 30 year fixed rate debt, which means when I'm around 75 to 80, most of these are gonna be paid off right around the time that I might need some uh, added uh, income to cover 
if I live that long, uh, average life expectancy dropped to like 76 per, uh, years old now. But if I live that long, uh, being average, uh, yes, housing can be more when you need assisted care. And some people have said, well, you move in with family. <laughs> no. I saw how my kids took care of pets. I want a paid professional <laughs> that's going to take money from my portfolio to do that. Thank you for the super chat, Drew. That's why I'm learning how to skydive. <laughs> Beautiful. There you go. Yeah, actually, my brother was telling me I should go get my pilot's license. So we'll see how that goes. Um, yes, housing can cost more based on age, not I don't I don't think based on retirement. Relocating can cost more during retirement. What? Many retirees can opt to downsize their home during their retirement years. This can certainly save you money, but there is a cost. Moving expenses. Okay. It's going to cost you money to move, yes. So that's not a recurring expense. That is a one-time expense that you can plan for. So I'm not sure if I agree with this one. Although, okay, they have a point right now. So for the last probably 40 years, you buy a big house, raise your kids, kids move out, you, you're empty nesters, you can sell the house and then move into a smaller house and you can reduce your housing expenses. But currently... Interest rates are so high. They're not building starter homes. We've built a fraction of the homes that we needed to in the last decade compared to the decades before. Something like it was 27 million in a decade, and it was like five. So there's not enough starter homes. Interest rates are high. Prices are high. It's very hard to sell a large house that has a really good interest rate because you either purchased it around or refinanced in 2020 to get that 3% interest rate. And if you're going to buy even a smaller house now at 6 or 7% interest rate, even downsizing your house might increase your cost. So relocating can have more cost during retirement. I agree. Don't know if that's tied to retirement though, versus age. Because if you retire at 30, you're not often an empty nester yet. Unless maybe you're from Rosemont, California. Then you started having kids really young. Family can call no. <laughs> Just immediate denial there. It's like happy 18th birthday restraining order. Family can cost more during retirement. As you get older, the size of your family is likely to grow. Okay. This can lead to some expenses you might not have anticipated before you retired. Alex says, don't be surprised if the number of your grandchildren doubles or even triples. So I guess that can be a problem for some people. Being a single parent, and, and this is an overshare, probably shouldn't say this. Uh, I had three kids I never wanted. I never wanted to have kids. There's plenty of kids. If I wanted to have a child, I should have adopted, right? But I had three kids with uh, girls who uh, were on birth control, use protection, swore they'd have an abortion, like literally didn't want to have kids, had kids. Once they're born, they're my responsibility. So a single parent raised three kids. But because of that, because of my negativity towards creating kids when there's plenty of kids who need to be adopted, my son got a vasectomy at 20. Both of my daughters are not interested in having kids. So I don't see me having grandkids. So that is something that you have some input into uh, sometimes. Uh, as you okay, I've read that. Uh, transportation can cost. Okay, so that must have been the eight. Yeah, it was eight of 11. That was eight things that can cost you more. Nine, this is the things that can cost you less. Transportation can cost less during retirement. Uh, thankfully, some costs also go down during your golden years. Uh, and RJ Weiss, CFP, Certified Financial Planner, which to me is somebody you avoid at all costs. Uh, I don't believe in financial planners. I would never use one, and I don't know that anybody should. Uh, I've had such a negative experience with financial planners. I was uh, being a veteran, and I would go on to the bases to teach resume classes, to teach about the hidden job market, how you can find a job when you get out of the military. And I would see financial planners, predatory ones on bases, trying to get tapped into service members' accounts because the people who benefit from managing your accounts aren't you. It's them. Um, so the Waste of Wealth explains, without a daily commute, retire, so traveling is definitely less. You can put less miles on your vehicle, depending on what kind of traveling you do. You spend less on transportation. Sometimes I think, I don't know if this is in here, but if you're um, a couple, maybe you down to, you know, from three vehicles to two or two vehicles to one, whatever you're doing there, as your kids move out, you have less transportation costs. Um, I've got each one of my kids a car over time, uh, and there was expenses related to that, but that's now a them problem. Okay, I can agree with that. Transportation can cost less during retirement. That's one of the expenses that goes down. Life insurance can cost less during retirement. Okay, this is probably tied to age. If you retire at 25 and you have a family that is dependent on you, it's entirely possible to retire at 25. 
I think uh, Cody and Christian are good examples of uh, this. This is an age tide. This is uh, a, the duration of when you start investing to when you can reach financial freedom, not based on your age. Uh, I'm trying to think if I've ever had life insurance. I had careers. I worked in law enforcement and the military. They had life insurance that was provided. Uh, I never wanted to be worth more dead than alive because my kids would kill me for a slice of pizza. So life insurance can cost less during retirement because I think you're going to have less people dependent on you and it's less likely that you should even have it or need it. Uh, so in addition to the possibility of saving money on your auto insurance premiums, you might be able to save on your life insurance coverage as you enter retirement. Yeah, because it should be zero. You should get rid of it. And recreation can cost less during retirement. Hang on. That made me actually scratch my head. Well, wasn't there one that said relocating housing costs? Entertainment can cost expenses can cost more during retirement. So entertainment costs more. And recreation can cost less. To, okay. Although Okay. Although entertainment may cost more during retirement, moving to a retirement community with tennis courts, golf course, and a rec center tied to age because old people play golf and tennis, right? And a rec center could save you hundreds of dollars on club memberships. Okay. Uh, if you can find the right retirement spot, you might be able to downsize and find a great community with lots of activities. I retired to a town called Port Orchard in Washington that has a waterfront that has a ferry system that can take me to Bremerton and Seattle, a foot ferry, just walk right on. It's like two bucks to get everywhere. Uh, so I did kind of retire to an area where there are activities that, yeah, okay. Recreation can, so yeah, but that's entertainment too. So make your entertainment, your recreation, tie those costs together. Okay, Michelle Lambright Black is a credit expert finance writer and travel writer with nearly 20 years of experience. She's also a founder and credit writer of creditwriter.com, a judgment-free personal finance community for busy moms like herself. When she's not writing about credit and money, Michelle loves to travel with her family of five, usually to somewhere sunny and warm. Okay, cool. This was not a paid advertisement. I've never seen this person before. I just thought I'd give them credit for the article that they wrote. I agreed with most of it. There was one or two that I didn't. So let me know in the comments. So before I wrap this live stream up, and again, if you want questions answered during the live stream, remember Tuesday afternoons, 4 p.m. Pacific, I will answer all the questions that come in. I also answer questions if they're left in the comments after a video. Uh, things that cost less in retirement. Uh, for me, transportation, totally agree. Uh, travel, because the way you do it can cost less. You're not commuting. You're not saving for retirement. That's the one thing I didn't see here is that when you retire, you no longer have to save for retirement. And the other big one that really goes down when you, when you retire is taxes. Right, earned income, earned money that you get from jobs that you work, are taxed at the highest, pretty much rate of of anything. So there were two things missing there: um, saving for retirement. You are retired; don't need to do that. Probably can, but don't need to. And the amount of taxes you pay. So other than that, I think Michelle did a great job. I will stop sharing my screen, and. Let me look at the chat really quick just to say hello to everybody because I appreciate it. Anytime you guys show up for my live streams, much appreciate that. Aloha, financial firefighter, Mandy, howdy, wealth building journey, morning, landlord odyssey, wealth building journey. Dodgers trounced Orioles, by the way, 10 to 3. That's a that's a sports ball, right? Be frugal until the income snowball kicks in. Exactly. Red Berserker, howdy. And what do you pay for health insurance? Where do you shop for it? So, oh, that's a good thought. Thank you for asking that question. I'm glad I looked. Here's a really cool thing. Uh, whatever your political beliefs are, the ACA, America Cares Act, or whatever uh, some people call Obamacare, uh, what you pay for health care is often tied to your income. Let me explain something about real estate. $203,000 in rental profit last year. So pay principal, interest taxes, and insurance, set aside for repairs, maintenance, and vacancy. Six figures profit. So I was comfortable retiring. Zero income. Zero. Because of depreciation and write-offs. So they uh, uh my 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 healthcare premium is like four something a month. So it's not it's not even the cash flow from a unit. And you just go to Obamacare, shop for it there. Uh, it's probably not what it's called, ACA, but that's that's what I've heard so many people call, call it. 
Uh, so when you retire, my friend who's retiring with rentals, yeah. So for her Cobra, however many months, it's going to be that much. But when that ends and she goes to ACA, income's going to be zero because I carried forward a loss, even though I had a couple hundred thousand dollars in profit. It's like Congress is full of people who own real estate who keep making laws that benefit people who own real estate. What are the odds? Jody, morning all. Celebrating today my daughter's 13th birthday. Cool. Wish me luck for the next few years. 14 was the nightmare year for my daughters. My son, it was 2 to 31. But my daughters, it was 14. Like, and then 15? I don't know what happened. Great human beings. Uh, it's hard to survive with a teenager than buy rental property. It's always true. Jay, New York City, I'm so sick of jobs. I always loved work, but hit a wall recently where I realized I kind of done working and finding my first property. Yeah, that, that's a great motivation. For me, it wasn't so much that I hated the job. It was I hated work. I hated having to do something. And I'm super lazy. And lazy is powerful motivation. Stephen C., howdy. Uh, Andrew, again, thank you for the super chat. Jay in New York City, hey, Tian, why does FHA allow for you to go from fourplex to three, but not from, okay. I'm sorry, I'm going to read that entire question. This is a good question. Why does FHA allow you to go from fourplex to threeplex to twoplex, but not one, and go from one and up? Seems so counterintuitive because surely people increase assets rather than decrease the size. That is going to be my live stream on Tuesday. Why does FHA do things so stupidly? So I'm going to take a picture of that so I remember. But if you're here on Tuesday, Jade, that entire thing will be dedicated to that. Uh, Drew, what's your opinion on 15? I'm going to really get through these. 15-year mortgage, low interest rate. Uh, I want 1,000-year mortgages. Don't care about the interest rate. Want the better cash flow. And there's a lot of questions here, which we're going to come on Tuesday. Uh, because today, I'm going to go and paint Millennial Mike's house. Thank you all very much for hanging out with me on my live stream. I'm going to take a screenshot of some of these questions and try to get them on Tuesday. Okay, so I missed some. And Don and Beth Perkins, howdy. Everybody else I missed. C. Burns, Stephen, you guys have a day full of awesome.